the finance minister of Jammu and Kashmir because the finance minister was speaking. So it's good to have you back, Mr. Dabu. And thank you very much for confirming the CNBC TV 18 news break. Uh, Mr. Dabu, uh, you know, uh, what kind of challenges do you foresee in classification now? Because as far as the assess is concerned, it's very clear. It's on uh, about five items, pan masala, aerated drinks, luxury cars, and uh, tobacco. But on classification of what falls under 12%, 18%, what can you move from 20 26 perhaps to 18 and 12 and so on and so forth. What were the broad discussions that happened uh, in the GST Council, sir? I know a final decision will be taken by a committee of secretaries, but if you can take us through what the principles were that were being discussed in terms of classification. Yeah, I think as I was saying when we, when we kind of dropped off the last conversation, to my mind it's more important uh, what fits into what rate now uh, than the slabs themselves. Uh, I think one of the views which initially how it starts off was that you will start funneling current rates so that the incidence of taxation that is today will be maintained by and large. But I think there was a issue which I, I had with this whole process is that your current rates are not quite in line with uh, the evolved economy uh, and these rates are fairly distorted by exemptions and other things. So I think uh, this is a good occasion also to relook the entire taxation structure and see in line with the new realities uh, which goods should fit in where. What was a luxury item in 1950s or 60s or 70s is no longer a luxury item. Uh, for a cell phone, a smartphone is no longer a luxury item. It in, in, in many cases is an investment uh, item. So in some ways, I think what the biggest challenge would be to do the fitment of commodities in line with the current realities of the new emerging India. So it will be a more relevant, more modern uh, tax distribution, uh, commodity distribution within these tax brackets, which will reflect the reality and not the kind of CPI consumption basket, which really doesn't reflect the current consumption patterns of this. There's also the issue that uh, I think the big point that's not being highlighted is that there is no exempted commodity. If there are commodities, they are in the zero category. So you need to look at zero also as a rate. So it's zero, five, 12, 18, and 28. So if I were to classify it, I would see it more in terms of two standard rates, 12 and 18, which will at some point over the next three, four years morph into one rate, somewhere around 14. You have two uh, rates, which are zero and five, which are the lower rates, and one, the demerit rate, which is 28. And uh, to that, you will add the CES to give you a rate of 40% or around there, which are for those five or seven commodities. So that's how it has evolved. And surely, some there will be, uh, to my mind, there should be a fair amount of restructuring of the commodities that uh, exist today on the incidents and how they will fit into these brackets. Okay, uh, that's very useful, Hasi. But uh, can you take us through a little more detail? Was your argument taken? that what was luxury in uh, 1975 when the MRTP was still in existence uh, and what is luxury today are va vastly different. Was that argument bought by uh, the GST Council? Absolutely. In fact, the finance minister endorsed that position. He said this is a, a very relevant point. Uh, we need to look at these things afresh and this provides an opportunity to do so. So uh, some of the stuff, uh, you know, will definitely get classified. It won't be a mechanical funneling of any rate at 28%. Please mm -hmm. also recognize, because mm -hmm. I see some of this being becoming a part of discussion, that the rate of, let's say, air, air condition is, uh, uh, is 33%. Mm. The fact is, it is 33%, including cascading. Mm. The whole point of a GST is not to have cascading. Okay. So then the effective rates might have been 38 the instance is 29%. Mm. So you will have to look at all these issues and try and see how the fitment takes place in a thing. I would also look at it from another perspective, which mm. we discussed, is that what is the weighted uh, rates that you're looking at? Mm. I would imagine what was in an earlier debate when we started this whole process, mm. which was called the RNR, if you remember, yeah. the revenue neutral rate, will get replaced in some way by a weighted average rate of GST. Okay. And I would think, in my opinion, depending on how, now because you have a lot of flexibility once you allow for fitments across various categories, mm. you should get a rate of around 22%. Okay. This is my gut feeling, which in some ways then over time mm. will, you know, once you merge the 12 and the 16 to give you a 14 and a half, mm. 
and by buoyancy and other factors, lower, better compliance, less leakages, you will see that the rates have come down. The real issue, which didn't get resolved to the satisfaction of everybody, and I think I'm included in that in terms of, is using CES, or mm. rather using GST revenues to, to fund compensation. Okay. It is something that actually has contributed to a rise in the rates. Okay. You could have lived with 5, 10, 15, and 20. Had you looked at compensation outside the GST regime, Okay. But then the reality of life is that, you know, Centre has now a lot of commitments through Finance Commission Award acceptance, through the CSS schemes and all that. Mm. Uh, they are in a bit of a bind. And uh, it was finally agreed that CES would be used as a uh, mode of financing the compensation. It's not an ideal situation, mm. but it is a consensus. it was done by consensus. Mm. Uh, Haseeb, uh, that, that was most useful. If the weighted average rate, uh, probably your calculation is, would come to 22%, that's uh, extremely helpful uh, to understand how uh, the categories will uh, pan out. But, uh, you know, the finance minister in passing said that, you know, cars would be 28%, but luxury cars would be 28% plus CES. Uh, yes. Can we therefore understand that now even the small car would be 28%? All cars are 28%? I think I think that's that's the way it would pan out. You know, I I think we, what we laid out is principles. Okay. Some broad principles, which is why I said that zero is a category. You know, one of the things that has really distorted the entire taxation system in the country has been those exemptions. Mm. So if you created an exempted category, you would have had the same problems. So zero rate, let's say for food grains. Now it's a correct uh, direct signal that we want cheaper food grains in the country. Mm. Similarly, once you remove all the exemptions and provide rates, that you will find some of these uh, you know, small cars maybe at 28 percent. The larger ones would be, you know, uh, at 28 plus plus something. Mm. And you don't really also want to shock the system. Okay. So you won't be violently off thing, but I think over the next three to five years, and I keep emphasizing that you can't sleep in a VAT regime and wake up in a GST regime. Mm -hmm. You will have to give it some time to kind of, uh, you know, phase yes. in and uh, stabilize. And uh, uh, there has to be, it has to be revenue neutral, it has to be inflation neutral, it has to be distribution neutral, mm -hmm. it has to look at, you know, deficits of all states. I think it was, it's a fairly complex issue and it's been done rather smoothly. Okay. Uh, in terms of building consensus for this, yes. Yeah, congratulations to you and uh, all the other finance ministers for ensuring that. But I liked your phrase saying nobody wants to shock the system. Uh, yes. The government doesn't want to shock the system. So should we understand, therefore, that we are not going to see too many things become way more expensive than what it is now? Maybe a percent here or there, not more than that? No, I wouldn't say that. I would, I would think that the categories would not. You know, you would not suddenly see... Luxury is becoming uh, very cheap. No. Okay. <laughs> you will not see basics becoming very expensive. No. But within categories, you will find... L L Lata, if I... Yeah. You will find... Sorry, goods. Mr. Drabu. I, in fact, this is the point that I've been trying to make for, uh, you know, for the last week and a half or so. And, and this is the, the argument that was being presented to us by the centre, is that it will pretty much be status quo. There's not going to be wild swings or even significant swings from what where we are currently. It's likely to be pretty much uh, status quo. That is the sense that we were getting from the center, and no. that seems to be corroborated by Mr. Drabu as well. Sir? No, I would not say that, Shree. I would not go along with that thing that it will be status quo. It will not be status quo because I think what was agreed in principle, it will be recorded in minutes, is that we will not look at a particular rate and say, okay, this is 30%, let's put it in 30 bracket. No. We will look at the, the fitment is a serious issue, which will be done by a committee, then will come to GST Council. What I'm saying is it won't be as if category suddenly luxury will become uh, cheap and uh, basic will become expensive. No. Those sensitivities we will maintain. However, within these categories, goods may move from one category to the other. Also, it's important, as I said at the beginning, what was a luxury item in 50s, is not a luxury item in 2016. I think we have to recognize those social realities as well. So this new tax fitment will reflect that, and I will, we will ensure that it does reflect that. And as I said, the finance minister, the union finance minister, really did accept this point that you know we need to factor this in and not just funnel them into 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 categories. And uh, and that's how the overall sense of the house was.
See, uh, while that's most welcome, that uh, 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 a very uh, rational fitment will be done on the principles you said, the, it does open the door for a lot of lobbying. I think from now till the final secretary's list is out, uh, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people in industry will be lobbying to push their categories into, uh, you know, favorable uh, tax slabs, won't they? Yeah, but when you have 29 states at 29 different levels of development with different interests, I think these lobbies will cut each other into finally giving you something which is a reasonable mean. Okay. And, uh, uh, you know, you will find that you will reflect some social realities in your tax rates, mm. which otherwise probably have been, you know, anarchists of the past that you are, but, you just got used to it and there are so many exemptions Haseeb, and that's how you're avoiding it. I see yeah. you 29 guys cannot vet... Uh, something like probably 6,000 goods in various categories. So, you know, there is scope for lobbying, you will have to admit. No, I'm, I'm sure there is scope for lobbying in everything. Even mm -hmm. tax rates, when you were making changes in budgets, there have been lobbies. It's mm -hmm. not that it's not been so. I mean, these are these are legitimate instruments of uh, determining economic policy. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a part of the system that you're in. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I'm, I'm not saying that we look at all of these, but mm -hmm. broadly speaking, you will find that There'll be a redefinition. It will not be a CPI consumption basket. Now, okay. that also has its implications on inflation, you know, yeah. that what is today getting calculated, because a lot of the uh, inflation control will come through putting uh, food gains on zero category, mm -hmm. large weight in CPI, large yes. weight. Yes. Suddenly you will find that that will kind of, you know, be a cushion against inflation. Yes. So if you are looking at distribution impacts, that will be a, a positive thing. If you look at inflation impacts, that will be a positive thing. So, uh, all told, if you look at three things, revenue neutrality, mm. inflation neutrality, distribution neutrality, then these things will work. And it gives you a certain policy flexibility okay. to play around with numbers and get a weighted rate that you find desirable. Okay. So, can we now conclude that the GST bill does get passed in the next session and GST is here on April 1st? Well, I always maintain that this is going to happen. But I would think tomorrow is another uh, big day, the cross-empowerment. I, myself, I mean, personally, I'm, I was more worried about the cross-empowerment issue being resolved rather than the rate issue for me. I don't think rate issue was, I, I never thought that it was, was a big deal. But tomorrow is the cross-empowerment of who will control which uh, segment of traders and what category of taxes will be up for discussion and that will be a serious one. Cross empowerment is the new jargon for dual control. That's right. Okay. <laughs> That's right. That's how it's been. But <laughs> it's that won't be a deal breaker, will it? I mean, you will be able to resolve um, it tomorrow. It won't be a deal breaker, but it's going to be difficult to get a consensus on that one. Okay. Especially uh, after states we recognize the Mr. kind Drabu. of. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Dabu, unfortunately, sir, we, we've kept you uh, uh, for, for, for very, very long. We appreciate you joining us here and giving us the details on CNBC TV 18.